Yeah, American Issues, take two. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. Uh, and we're talking about polls today. How are the full polls being affected? How will they affect the election um, two weeks away and beyond? Um, so let's talk to our regular co-host, Kim Apicella, our regular uh, uh, contributor, uh, Stephanie Stoll Dalton, and our special esteemed guest who joins us from a hotel lobby uh, somewhere in the former USA, uh, uh, Jeffrey Portnoy. Uh, welcome all of you to the show. I'm not sure the folks in Warsaw really care about the election, so I don't know why we're doing the show. Well, we'll find a reason. So the first question is... Um, You're talking about polls, polls, right? Yeah, polls. Why? why how oh, polls. polls. I got it. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, this is, this is going to be a very cohesive <laughs> show. Uh, I was so, a little slow on that one. Tim, let me go to you first. <laughs> what are the polls saying right now about the, the elections two weeks away? Well, it shows that the those Democrats that were had a more comfortable margin of um, favorability in September, um, that, that margin is eroding. Uh, although many of the Democrat um, candidates for Senate and governor of various states, um, they still are up uh, to two points, maybe three points, but they enjoyed a higher margin back in September. So they are tightening. And um, I'm starting to think that, you know, the recent attention on the polls and uh, advertising the fact that these are neck and neck is not to have Democrats get complacent, stay at home thinking, okay, the polls show that my candidate is going to win. Therefore, I don't need to go out and vote. I think they're doing this on purpose to say it's, it's, a, it's a horse race, it's neck and neck. And every vote is required and needed if you want to preserve democracy. That's the sense I'm getting on all the, um, you know, uh, CNN and MSNBC type shows. Um, you know, inherent in your answer is the notion that that the polls want to control the vote. That's what you're saying. Well, I'm saying that the media that takes the polling data is spinning it. Yes, it's, it's not the polls that are doing it. It's the media that's reporting on the polls. And I'm seeing some spin room um, effects going on here. Yeah. OK, let me go to you, Stephanie. <clears throat> Do we know who the pollsters are? Do we know how they conduct these polls? Um, do, are we supposed to um, attach the credibility of the media to the polls? In other words, if you believe the media, then therefore you believe the polls. Um, and and one the of the polls. thing is, there are a lot of pollsters out there some of them are more left than right, and some of them are more right than left. Um, you have to pick a poll, don't you? How do you do that, and how do you know it's a good poll? Well, the polls uh, in general are considered the most exp uh, you know, successful political development in the century, okay? And that uh, presumably they show us uh, what it is that the public wants. So I suppose some of the polls are going to show that better or be more to your liking than others. But as I watch it on the, the shows, so CNN, et cetera, I mean, they always identify the pollster. Sometimes they even interview the pollster. There's usually a date on the poll, um, usually some numbers, usually about a thousand. They've got the, all of that statistics down about all the methodology for how many they need to contact and uh, get get uh, data from so they can you know run it through their algorithms. Uh, so um, presumably they give voters the chance to compare where they stand against where others stand that they wouldn't have otherwise. I mean, it really it was a breakthrough from what information was available before. So it's a very powerful tool and it can influence decision making and it can influence voters, you know, uh, and they, they also can um, give journalists a boost. They give journalism a huge boost. The polls do. So they're tools for journalists to, to really um, uh, make a difference in the way they're reporting and, and the specifics that they're providing for the public. And the other, but the other advantage of them is that they keep government honest, I guess, or not. But I mean, all, all of these advantages and features of polls and how they're a con contribution to our democracy can be uh, tweaked other ways. Now we know, now we know that the misuse that can come into. So you're asking, well, what, what's the misuse? Do we know, you know, who, who these people are that are doing the polling? And I don't think we do get any systematic uh, 
uh, introduction to you know who they are and how good they are. They just say that the, it, it will be the journalists that say, oh, this is a really good poll from Quinniakiak or wherever it is that the poll is from. So I don't think that answers the question. I don't know that there is an answer question. I'm thinking maybe we don't know the answer, Jay. We're not getting enough information. It's a good question. Um, Jeff, Jeff, do you do you think polls are really necessary? Um, no, I think they're ridiculous. I think they're I think they're ridiculous, and I don't think anybody that thinks they serve any purpose, sorry, Stephanie, is is just dead wrong. First of all, <laughs> we know from 2016 that the polls are not accurate anymore. They couldn't have been more inaccurate, and they're inaccurate in state after state, in 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 race after race. They're inaccurate because the hundred years of polling, whatever Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone doesn't work anymore. Some huge percentage of people don't have phones, uh, you know, landline phones. They have cell phones and they don't respond to pollsters. And they're a very significant part of the community, either because they don't want to respond. And we saw that with Trump voters and we continue to see how undercounted they are because they don't want to, they don't believe in those people. And so they will not respond. Or they're of a different generation and don't think they're of any value. I think they hurt. I think they hurt because I think they give out misleading information about how close or unclose a race may be. And yeah, I mean, the last, it's a horse race, right? People can't wait to get the polls because the polls apparently give us a snapshot. That's what the pollsters say, right? It's a snapshot of the days they took the poll. And then when the polls are totally wrong, three days later, they go, well, we told you there was a snapshot. So, you know, they're, they're fun to talk about. And they do show shifting voting sentiments, quote unquote. But if I had to bet over under on any particular poll, I think I'd probably take anything that said the polls will be off by three or four percent, at least. Yeah. Yeah, you make it sound like a horse race, and maybe it is a horse race. Maybe it's a big bet. It's, a, it's the national paramutual. <laughs> so see, see if you agree or disagree with. with you got, you got, you got, you got a better chance betting on a horse race. <laughs> so, Tim, how much does it affect you uh, when they say that the Democrats were ahead or more ahead, uh, say in the House uh, a couple of weeks ago and less ahead now? Does that affect you? Does that affect your vote? You think it affects anybody's vote. Um, what's the point? Um, I, I, I think it's a moment to, it's a feel good moment if your candidate's up in the polls. It's a feel good moment. <clears throat> Does it affect you? Sure, I mean, if, if the, the data shows that your candidate is way ahead, uh, you may just stay at home going, they got it, it's in the bag. I don't need to disrupt my shopping time uh, or I don't need to disturb my personal time after work. I don't need to vote because my candidate's going to glide through the finish line. Uh, I'm with Jeff. I mean, the sampling is horrible. Uh, who has a, a landline anymore? I don't know anyone, but uh, apparently they're out there. The bottom line is uh, the data is horribly skewed. And, and um, sure enough, I mean, 2016 was the the, the, the major year where they got it completely wrong. And so there's a lot of damage to the credibility of pollsters. And, when, and that's evidenced by saying the margin of error is at least two and a half to 3%. That's a, light, that's a wide margin. That's mm -hmm. huge. Or, or sometimes over 4%, they'll tell you that. Yeah, so I, I mean, that's, I, I, I mean why, why have a poll if, if, if you're gonna have a swing of 4%? That makes no sense to me. So Tim, I, I asked you how you, know, you react, but I'd like to ask you now how you think you know, the electorate reacts, um, some of whom, some of whom may not be as Akamai as you. Um, and they see the polls the same way. Um, do you think it changes the effect? Uh, does the effect have a change on the election? Um, in other words, uh, okay, they may stay home because they think their side already won. Um, or they may say, oh, gee, um, I, I got to vote right now to help my side. Or, oh, gee, I don't believe any of this. I mean, what? how does the average person in average middle America uh, react to a poll? Uh, I'm going to go to Jeff's statement. I completely agree, agree with Jeff about the uh, mega GOP going, uh, we don't trust these people. We don't like these people. And these people report fake news. And so there, we're not going to participate or we're going to lie on purpose. We're going to skew the polls. 
So it's a sabotage effect. Um, and then you're right, the, Gen, the, you know, the Gen Zs, uh, do they see any value of the polling? Um, maybe the, the, the millennials do, but Gen Z, I don't think they do. And certainly Gen Z, does, they don't have a landline. So you're not getting uh, the opinions and the, you know, how they're be leaning towards a candidate because they all have cell phones. Um, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm not up on polls at all. I, I, I may be, you know, a little more lenient than uh, Jeff is on the criticism of polls, but I'm not for them either. I think they're a bad idea. I mean, I think they serve two purposes. One, I think internal polling is a good thing done by a candidate. And I've been involved in a lot of elections where I see internal polling compared to external polling, and they don't match all yeah. the time. And in fact, it's, it, most of the time they don't match at all. But what polling has become, and if you get a thousand texts a day like most of us do, it's become a fundraising tool. Mm. Every day I'm getting polls now from every Democratic candidate you can think of. Uh-oh, we're down to 2%. We need another 25 bucks. That's the only value of polls now is to get money, frankly, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, oh, well, that's a really good point. I get the same email, and mm -hmm. it turns me off completely. I would never give money, and I wouldn't believe the pollster either. Um, so, Stephanie, let, you know, let's – well, let me, let me ask you this. Do, do you think that polls had a big effect in the 2016 election by which Trump was elected, arguably? And do you think that whatever effect they had in those days is going to be repeated here, well, was repeated in 2020, and will be repeated in the midterms coming in two weeks? Well, I, I, I you know, I, I think people are... Uh, as as you all have said, I mean, the, the polls are less valuable. I mean, as long as we don't know the sampling frame, we need to be informed as much by that and even more than knowing what the, sta the standard error of measurement is, um, even for these uh, close races. But we need to know where they're getting that information from. I, that does a, we need more information to understand if they can be helpful to us to know what is the picture that, that's out there. So, I mean, you brought up, I mean, a big hole here. Nobody's filling, nobody's uh, due diligence here on uh, on what's the quality of this data, okay? I mean, junk in, junk out. Data depends on having high quality input. Mm -hmm. So where are, they, where are they getting all this information from and how can they even begin to uh, to be useful for us? It, and so, I, I mean, like, like what is written about them is that they're very, they're very important to the whole democratic process, but you know, like everything else we've got that's so important is now being shown to have be double-edged sword. They're learning mm -hmm. how to use these things whichever way you want. Yeah, they're tools. And so is social media. And I want to go to social media now with you, Tim. Um, you know, the polls, um, and I, I think Jeff's point was really good um, about how they have become fundraising instruments. But um, social media has entered the arena, uh, and we, if we were not avail aware of it back in 2016, and reading, reading retrospectively, we should be aware of it now. Tim Snyder, uh, his, his book a couple of years ago was The Road to Unfreedom. Um, and uh, in that book, he goes on uh, at great length about exactly what Trump did for social media, and how he worked with Cambridge Analytica, how he worked with Putin, how Putin used the Internet Research Agency uh, and created these, these phony posts and, and retweets by the millions, by the billions, actually, and bots um, all over uh, the American landscape. And this is 2016 I'm talking about. We may not have been aware of it at the time. I don't think the press caught on to it right away. Um, and then we find later that that's what happened. And, and Snyder wrote this, uh, this really interesting review of it, a scary review of it. And then, I, as I recall, uh, back in the middle of Trump's uh, uh, administration, it, it was made clear that whatever was happening with social media trying to affect um, you know, changes in, in public sensibilities was still happening and, and did happen in 2020 and will happen in 2022, a couple of weeks from now. So this is, I, I guess you could say it's a kissing cousin of polls because it's a, an attempt to uh, get you in your bubble uh, and it's an attempt to change your sensibilities to the extent possible. So what about social media? 
how would you how would you compare social media with polling, uh, Tim? How would I compare social media with polling? Um, you know, Jace. Now and then, you ask me a question I don't have an answer to. I, I will. <laughs> I will. I will say that um, the service of the former head of security of Twitter, and I, I, I'm trying to look up his name, and I can't recall it. Um, he did great service to uh, all of us to say what Twitter has in control and what things they don't know about. And to a certain degree, they don't know still how many fake bots they have in their accounts. Um, Elon Musk said, I'm not going to go through with the deal because you can't disclose the number of, of fake bots. Um, my deal, my, my sale of, uh, my purchase of Twitter was contingent upon, I think, 5% or less. Um, so we don't know to what degree fake bots exist. We don't know degree uh, Eastern Bloc countries or Russia has uh, infiltrated uh, Facebook, Twitter in the 2022 election. We know what they did in the 2016 election and uh, the amount of bots and fake messages um, and fake accounts was astronomical. And did it help Donald Trump? You bet it did. So social media is as important as the um, the election in 1960 between Nixon and Kennedy. It was a tool that was never used before quite, quite effectively. Kennedy took advantage of it, Nixon didn't. Uh, social media is no different than those days. And uh, whoever can you know, grab hold of the most effective way of advertising on, on Twitter and Facebook, um, better their campaign goes. Mm. You, you spoke before the show about, one, one second, Jeff, you spoke before the, the show about algorithms uh, that that are used by social media and how they tend to keep us or um, you know connect us with our respective bubbles. Can you talk about that now? Sure. Well, it was highly used in 2016. Uh, the public now is aware of the term, and that is you uh, you know you're going through your social media and you click on a news article and it's pertaining to a certain uh, specific subject. And you click on another one that's a little bit similar. Now, Facebook and Twitter knows exactly what you're interested in. They start crafting other news stories that are related to that and start sending them to you. You start seeding them on your feed. And you, lo and behold, um, you start clicking on those. And before you know it, you're now considered uh, either a, a, you know, a liberal Democrat or a, a mega GOP. Mm -hmm. And uh, f Facebook and Twitter are going to feed to that. And you're going to get more of what you like, more of which is filtered for you. And uh, you now found yourself in your own silo, your own bubble with other fellow mega GOP or liberal Democrats. Well, you know, Jay, that algorithm, we don't know enough about that. They're not reporting out on how they're using it. And it may be that we are into a synonymous situation here. The overlap of social media with polling, we don't know but that those algorithms may be feeding the polls or polls may be resourcing alloc, alloc, alloc algorithms. Or yeah, I want, to, I want to add one point. You know, I, I don't know about you guys, but uh, I have on occasion sat at phone banks for given candidates. And the rule in the phone bank was you don't call the other side. You don't call people on the other side of the, of the question of the election because you won't be able to convince them. You call people either on your side of it or people in the middle, and you try to confirm them um, to be sure to go down and vote for the person they they think will win. That is the person you think they will vote for. So it's the confirmation aspect, and I think we have to build that into the discussion. Uh, the polls were to confirm. Uh, likewise, the social media has been designed through these algorithms to confirm. It's the same principle as the phone bank. Anyway, Jeff, you were going to say. Well, I, I was going to say that social media reports the polls, and so it gives them much greater import than they would ordinarily have. Most people don't read the newspaper, and so they're not going to see the poll results, and or they watch a particular television station, uh, whether it's left or right, and they see the polls that that particular outlet wants to produce. But on social media, you can find every single poll you're interested in. And I think social media drives whatever importance polls have. And I think they have importance. I just think it's all negative importance. I mean, it, it, it in many ways, I think, drives people uh, to either vote or not vote, as Tim said. 
I mean, if your candidate's up by eight points, you'd rather go to Walmart. If your candidate's down by eight points, you'd rather go to Walmart. So you try to make a horse race, you know, between one or two percent and hope that the people on either side decide, you know what? My vote's important. But unfortunately, just take a look at the number of people who vote. Half the country doesn't think their vote matters, so they don't bother. And that's another problem with polls. It doesn't accurately reflect who's going to vote. Who's your preference means nothing. It's who you're actually going to cast a ballot for. That makes the difference. Well, there are all these experts out there, you know, who give Like counsel. us? Like us? No, no, we don't give counsel to candidates. No, no, but experts, you said. Uh, <laughs> experts who give counsel. And oh, there okay. are all these experts who give counsel about polls. You know, they, they're well paid. Uh, they're part of the campaign team for sure. Uh, and uh, there are experts in social media. And it's, you know, the same idea. Let's, let's change the way the vote will come out. Um, and, you know, as, as I mentioned, Tim Snyder writes this up about the 2016 election. It is really scary how powerful uh, social media and the bots and the algorithms and, and these retweets coming from Vladimir Putin. Uh, Putin and Cambridge Analytica and um, Mark Zuckerberg and, and Donald Trump all in a little cabal um, in 2016, and it was it, it worked. Um, but I, I don't think we should forget for a minute they were using um, what do you want to call it uh, social psychology to them to the nth degree and using polls and social media in order to swing the vote, um, and that still exists. You know, I'm reminded that there were a couple of years in the middle where Congress was going to have um, going to take some action. Um, they were going to investigate this. They were going to have hearings, but nobody knew how to frame a question. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg could dance around and, and confuse them, and no, nobody could figure out exactly how this worked, um, either on the Cambridge analytical, analytical level uh, or on the, on the internet research level um, or on the social media level. Yeah, but, but, but don't forget, and I don't have the statistics in front of me, but correct me if I'm wrong, but... 45 to 48 percent of the electorate is locked in regardless you're talking about four or five percent i don't know what percentage of races are 52 to 48 or 50 most of them are you know or else they're over before they even start so the polls to me are a joke anyway because 46 47 percent are already in one camp or another when the race starts and you're fighting for that five percent that haven't yet said they've made up their mind. I mean, that's my view. Okay, well, let me go uh, further on your view. Congress has shown an interest, shown a concern about this, recognizing that uh, these which, ways- Which, which Congress? The same 90% that get elected every two years? Those the people? Congress. Oh, okay. But, and they have not, you know, uh, they have not done anything. But my question to you is, could you legislate um, a solution to this no. Could you say we don't want polls? Could you say we don't want social media on political issues? Uh, what is happened to free to speech at the congressional level? No. What happened to free speech? I mean, you're talking to the wrong guy. As horrible <laughs> as all these things may have turned out to be, it's free speech. It's well, not the speaker. It's the reader. Or the listener. Uh, some, some readers are incapable of reading. Well, I understand, yeah. but, uh, you know, they can listen. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, Tim. No, 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 that's okay. I'm interrupting you. Um, I'd like to um, highlight a point you just made, and that is the electorate is locked in. But why is that? I mean, in years past, you know, people's attitudes and values would change depending on what news was coming in, coming in about a candidate or a policy change a candidate had. But what's happening in our electorate now is, in some ways, politics has become the way of religion. And how often do you change your religion? Not very much. And so the more embedded politics are and as, as akin to a religion, um, you're talking about a very narrow slice of, of electorate that may change their opinion about one candidate or one party, one policy or another. I mean, and just I think look at her show. I think that's ahead, why polling is kind of useless now. I mean, just look at Herschel Walker. All the stuff that's come out. Correct. Have, the polls haven't moved that much at all. And in fact, some polls haven't moving in his direction. That's well, what I, tells you. I think you. that's a really good point. 
<laughs> Here's something really dramatic, and the polls haven't reflected it. To the people who are responding to the polls are oblivious to uh, Herschel Walker. Uh, so you can't you can't give credit to a poll that doesn't respond to a, you know an obvious change in circumstances. Which takes me to my last area of discussion with you guys, and I'll, I'll go to Stephanie on this. Stephanie, we have two weeks left. And uh, if you recall, you know, the Hillary Clinton affair with the emails and James Comey with the investigation at the FBI on or off or off or on, it did have an effect, arguably, um, not so much because he turned on the investigation or turned it off, but because the social media and the polling capitalized on it and everyone got on the bandwagon and attacked Hillary Clinton. And arguably that had an effect on the 2016 election. Um, so query, we're two weeks out now. Um, how likely is it that we're going to have another Hillary Clinton, James Comey affair, either in the polls or the social media or in an interactive, you know, an interactive exchange between the two of them? Well, maybe polls are doing um, more than 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 we ever thought they were supposed to do. I mean, in other words, you said there were no changes in um, the polls after all that came out about uh, Walker, but that, that may be what the polls are, are now needing to be considered to do, which is to bring us information that we didn't have otherwise, that actually it doesn't matter anymore. And that and uh, all, of, all of these uh, accusations, everything in certain categories or across the board or whatever, that people are not influenced by that. They're voting for their power base, that's all. Well, let me so ask you this, let me ask you, Stephanie, what about the delay factor? Uh, so I see what goes on with Herschel Walker, and uh, nobody calls me for a week. I just don't get a call. The poll is not recognizing any change in my thinking. So we don't have the result yet in polls from Herschel Walker. Uh, and you remember, that, you yeah. remember, you remember, and it's so true, so sadly, Donald Trump's famous quote, that he could walk down Fifth Avenue in New York and shoot somebody and he wouldn't lose a vote. I'm paraphrasing. That's where this country is yeah. right yeah. now. That's well, what about every that race. Bus? Yeah, what about the bus with <laughs> Billy Bush on it and they come up and, and, and right there on the screen, we see a movie of a, of, of, of a person that is completely moralless. So I think that it, there, there's information to be had, maybe not what we expected, but I was gonna say that, you know, there's bias in these polls and where do they report on the bias uh, of the polls? And as you were saying, uh, Jay, who you were supposed to call at the call bank. So how, what, how, what role does that play? And what's the control on that? And what's the measure of it that should be reported with the poll? And then of course the huge big, constructs that have to be considered are the va validity of the poll and the reliability of the up, poll. Up, up the until, go ahead, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, I was just going to say, because the reliability you've already discussed in the, it, under the, um, the issue of who's going out actually to vote. So after they report to the pollster, do they ever go out to vote? So is, what's the reliability? And, 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 and that deals with 20 years ago, 20 years ago, elections were decided on real issues. Mm -hmm. You know, the Cold War or the economy, and I mean really the economy. Now, since Trump, they're decided on personalities, one, and social issues, second. That's what this whole thing has turned into because of Donald Trump. Yes, there's always a few other things that come up. This election is between abortion and Trump. Really? I mean, that's what, it, that's what it's come down to. And when I mean personalities, I don't mean whether you're a nice person or not. It's whether you believe in Trump or you don't believe in Trump. I mean, and so it's, it's not good for democracy. No, it's no. like voting. It's like voting whether you like Nero or not as to whether the Roman Empire continues. Yeah, let, me, let, me, let me add uh, one thought to all of this, and that is you talked about the First Amendment, Jeff. Um, you know, when the First Amendment is so problematic as it is now, you wonder if it's sustainable. Uh, and, and the whole thing about crying fire at a, in a crowded movie theater, 
because there's an alarm, an alarm quality about it. Well, how about you know crying fire in a crowded social media where the, the, the result of the election can be dependent on that? It's equally, equally alarming. And I'm afraid to tell you that I think the First Amendment is under this kind of reverse echo effect attack. Well, um, we, we don't have enough time. We don't have enough time to debate that. But what, where we are, I said 20 years ago, I want to be more accurate. We're back to the early 50s in the McCarthy era, where you're either a communist or you're not, and that's how you vote. Seriously. Okay. <laughs> Sad. So I think we're, we're really out of time because we have another yeah. show to follow. Let me... Let me go to a Oh, it can't be any as good as the next show can't be anywhere near as good as this one. Cancel no, it. No, I, no, I would certainly I would certainly agree, at least in part. Uh, so, Tim, give us a closing comment, will you? How do I do that after what I just heard? Closing comment is this. <laughs> our polling is our polling now is being used as as news entertainment. The problem with the news is it's become blended with entertainment and, and over uh, opinions on blended with news and that's um that's that's the value of polling now it's it's i think it's useless and um you know i guess if you are going to use polling then then focus in on registered voters versus the term likely voters uh likely voters means nothing to me so t you know if you're going to poll poll those who are actively registered that's my final thought okay and uh, uh jeff how about you uh uh, do, can you do something in 10 or 15 seconds? No, I, I have nothing more to say because I want to get on to the next show. Of course you do. And uh, Stephanie, I know you feel the same way, but why don't you make a closing statement? <laughs> I, I can make a call. I want to just say that one of the arguments for polls is that uh, totalitarian governments do not ever take polls because they don't want any of this information out. They don't want voters to be able to compare or to know what's out there. But I think that that's all turning around now that because it's not servicing our democratic republic in the way that it was assumed that it it was going to do. We're, okay, we're, and we're, I only want to add one thought before we close, and that is we have two weeks to go. And if I was a, a MAGA Republican, or uh, one of those um, counsel counselor people, advisor people in the MAGA Republican camp, I would try to think of something uh, akin to the email issue with Hillary Clinton and let that go at the last minute and let it go in polls, let it go in social media or in an interaction between the two so I could wreck the election and get both houses, no question. We'll you, mean the, you, you, you mean the Hunter Biden indictment? Is that what you're oh, waiting for? I, I, think I'm, I think I mean exactly that. <laughs> okay, you guys, thank you very much. Uh, this is uh, Think Tech Hawaii, and we're talking about American Issues Take Two. We'll see you next week. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.